is where we're heading. We're going to do a Newcastle United St James's Park Stadium Tour. Oh, yeah, so Bobby. Go left. Hey, guess the lift game. Press it. Doors opening. That sounded quite good then. I'll be able to get you up the lifts and that quicker. Thanks. Right, we'll start again. As I say, welcome to St. James's Park on the Hockney Class United. My name's Nick, this is Carol. Um, take as many photos as you want. We'll try and be as informed as we can as we walk around the tour. Any questions, don't hesitate, just shout up, ask. So what we're going to do from this lovely corporate area, we're going to go up the concrete stairs up to level 7 where I sit to the plastic seats. Have a look there, have a look, I'll tell you a little bit about the stadium. Have a look at the views across the city, then we'll come down here, have a look at the box, then down to level 3, there's a little bit of history there, and we'll take the director's boxes, then we'll go across the road, ch uh, changing rooms, uh, media room, then we'll finish off bit side. But before we go, I like to know where everyone's from and more importantly who the support. Let's not be shy. Right, young man. I'm from Sri Lanka. Um, Make that so obvious. Yeah. Uh, Strangers. Uh, from America.
<laughs> There's Shell, in case you wonder where she was. <laughs> Uh, I've just stopped you here to give you a few little match day stats. On any match day, we need 532 hours before we open the doors. We usually run with about 550 to 600. We'll have 94 turns to get you in and out as quickly as possible. The capacity on air has changed since at the spell 52,312. We have a little bit more executive seating and a little bit more wheelchair access. At time of building, the cantilever roof was the biggest in the world at 68 meters. Uh, it's now the third biggest uh, Olympic stadium. West Armstrong's got a big roof, and also a cinema in Korea has the biggest roof in the world. There you go. I'll tell you more about the damage the roof causes, the problems we have with it. But the good thing about it is it's all weighted from the back, so there's no obstruction to your view when you get out there. That's the beauty of it. Who has been to St James's Park before? People. Well, that's well, our lovely stadium and the views over the city. I'll tell you a little bit more about the history of the stadium when we get outside. Well, St. James is Park. Enjoy the news. Straight across, we have the East Stand, which is our smallest stand. Uh, the reason it's the smallest stand is because behind it is these are terrace, which are listed buildings, and we cannot touch. So therefore, we cannot get off because we need to go back to the wall. So that will remain our smallest stand. The East stand. That was built in 1773. To the left, we have the Visa stand. To the right, we have the Delegate stand. The Visa stand from the corner there. So that's when they decided to uh, build level 7, what we're standing now. And we did get public permission to go right round from the Visas, around the Milburn, and across the Delegate. But it was deemed too expensive to build across the Delegate, so we put the metal uh, system underneath that side, so the engineering costs were going to be too much. So they decided against it. Across here and uh, along the Milburn, and that was built the year 2000. Go to the left and fill the leaves at level 7. We have our career supporters. We give them 3,200 seats. We have to because of our performers. We, we've just sent the survey out for all the season ticket to all of us, and the survey has asked the road support where they would like their safe seat. Yes, in standing, sorry. And pound to a penny, it'll be in that uh, Gallagher then, singing and dancing then, on the strawberry corner of the level two. So we're waiting for them to make sure we come back there, then we'll build our safe standing, and we'll get the license for the two of them at the same time. Three foxes over here to the left. We just come straight down that platform for about three, three foxes. The first one on the left is the grey seat, if you look in there. That is our sensory room, and the sensory room is a room for people with disabilities, maybe autism, maybe they don't like the, the noise, or they don't like the crowds, for whatever reason, go one way out, you can go in there, and the sensory device is a little, if they've got a little bit of anxiety, there you go in there, and there, that's what we've The room next to it is for the TV, maybe it may be Sky, BT, or Alphabet, so that's going to happen today, we'll uh, get that studio in there. Thank you. 
or shape you need a being foot small or the deposit right up to the bottom right hand corner of the tunnel there that leads to our pit hotel and our pit hotel consists of five cells painted the top to bottom in pink because pink is supposed to be a common colour so no thunder at the university no thunder at the police here so hopefully we'll put he or she in there will calm down and they won't lose their seat and pick up the top one because no one loses their seat. Just right, have a look out the pit from left to right. Did you see these? Is that we have a three foot scope on our pitch from left to right. If you look at the horns, straight across we are united, you'll see them and then they go down to the Pullman sign at the bottom right. There are about three foot poles. Even some of the players who appear to have here didn't know what the three foot drop up or half. That's why we we'll always shoot up to the visa ends if we get the toss. And down there to the Gallagher for two reasons. One, because we're going downhill. And two, because the Gallagher gets for signaling that step. Obviously, it's not illegal. You're allowed up to a four foot drop. And it's definitely not an advantage because we've never won it for 50 odd years. So that's definitely not the case. But I'll point it out when we get the pit so you can see it. The pitch is 105 by 68. As I say, this can't be a roof up right out. We are a city centre ground as well, so we don't get, even in the summer, we don't get much sun in here. Hence, you see all the light bricks. They are all from Holland, uh, as, as the grass is. We import the Dutch ryegrass seed, which is a very strong, very fast growing seed. The pitch is 10% hybrid, it's 10% uh, plastic. What we'll have is plastic strands every two inch centers. It's not like you will hear. This grass, as I say, with the, with the lack of sun, with the roof being city centre and the Gallagher, we'll put those uh, light grass on, but with those light grass, we do get a bit of disease in the ground. So every year we dig this up now. It's not like it used to be all the days where you can see it every single year. Every year we dig it up, reseed it, and as I say, the roots go through the plastic strands. This makes it more durable and you've got to say it's looking good for the start of March. It's been looking like that right the way through the season. In summer, we will have to cut the grass twice a day. It's usually just once a day, but sometimes we'll have such a good summer, sometimes it was twice a day. It's only two or three times a week in the winter though, so it's not so bad. There's a wave shell. I've been up here. Oh. In fact, where that lady is there in the, in the jeans, that's I think where we they sat up here. Yeah, I've been in here before anyway on match days. Sat. I've sat roughly about there, top, and I've sat, whoop, and I've sat roughly about sort of here. Well, 
pay the mark? Do you have a gentleman? I'll probably turn the check. Anyway, let's move to the next bit. Hey. Yeah. Well, you know the box of technology on the on the watches. There would be no no ifs or buts about that now. But what they're going to do is, you know, you know how they how they get the go uh, go like technology watches through a three D vision. I think they're going to go the same way with offside as well. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. There might there might be a chip in the ball, but it's definitely the. Uh, Camera angles. There's four, twelve. I think there's two up along here. I think there's four either side there. So there's a few. There's tw he said there's twelve. I caught the lads who was fixing the camera the other day, and that's what he said. He said there was twelve. That's it's, uh, it's like the three D dimensions of the. the um, so I'm gonna put the lines across the park from the TV and everything, so you can see the off sides. I think they might go with the with the cameras, yeah. I because that's definitive. It's, you're still leaving it up the uh, human error with them, like, as, as we've seen in the last few weeks. There's been a couple of dodgy ones, so that is still the human error. I think if we use this technology, I don't think you can. It, it, it takes human error out of it. It's because they, they, if you look at the watch, they go like technology now, they look at the watch straight away, don't they? And, if it's, look, and, and you'll find when they put the cameras on it, they've never been wrong yet. So, touch words, that keeps going on. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. Oh, one last one. One last one before we go. Carol, our co uh, host here, is also a steward on match days, right? So she take so I know this is for a fact. How long do you think it takes? Remembering you get a, about a little bit longer here, you get about an hour and a half here. Sometimes we'll keep the wear support as in a little bit longer. How long do you think it takes to empty the base of the stadium out? I was going to say win, lose or draw, but if we lose, this stadium's empty pretty quickly, I can tell you. Uh, how long do you think it takes to empty the stadium out? And it's not just this stadium, all stadiums have to do it. Two hours. Two hours, isn't it? 15 to 30 minutes? No, a little bit less than that. It's, te it's 10 minutes. That's what it's got to be done at, but we, we usually do it at... When I'm seeing the stadiums, actually, I'm not talking about them guys wrong, there will be people lingering about who wait for everyone to go, but 99% of the stadium is out. Uh, it's averages between about six and a half to just over nine minutes. Mm. The longest one being Chelsea, but can you remember there was a little bit handbags for the Chelsea? There was a little bit handbags after the game when they were had a little bit orgy bargy. So that was nine minutes, two seconds. Uh, I think the Forest game, the first one, they had a little bit here, Jude, so that was about seven and a half minutes. But I think the, the, the look, was it Bournemouth? Was it about the Queen's, after the Queen's uh, funeral? There was no flags, the atmosphere was pretty dull. I think that was about just over five minutes, it was a 1-1 draw. So that just tells you about where it is, you know. It's, uh, but that's why they have all the turnstiles and all the safety to us, to get people out as quickly as possible. But I think it's, there is someone from the council that times it in their control box, and it does have to be done by 10 minutes. Mind you, don't get us wrong, the, the Southampton game where we get along the semi-final, I'm sure we'll get along in 10 minutes. I think they do make exceptions for certain games. But in, in, in general, you have to be out by 10 minutes. It's because of the Bradford fire. Can you remember the Bradford fire? No. <coughs> it was a big fire. 
a lot of people die it's from them any questions great if you follow me don't <coughs> Right, well, I'll stop you here, or oh, it's just a little bit of the sad bit of the tour. Uh, back in 2014, long before the troubles in Ukraine now with the Russians, uh, we had a pre-season friendly in New Zealand. And two of our most loyal fans was flying over to New Zealand. Um, and the plane was flying over the Ukraine airspace, and it was taken down by a Russian missile. And it was classed as an act of terrorism. Uh, also, the two fans, John Alda and Liam Sweeney, and the 200, other 296 people on the plane all died. So, we made this memorial garden, it's uh, the Sweeney and Alda Memorial Garden, and that's where I remember John, uh, John Alda and Liam Sweeney. I, I, I still see, see the dad, Barry. Uh, on the ref? Yeah. Uh, I see him about. Yeah. Uh, just to the left, we have the hedges, NUFC. I must have walked past there a hundred times, didn't even know they were there when I came here. And anyway, that's when they're not cutting the grass, they're trimming the hedges. <laughs> I'm quickly going to take you through some of these ramps that are around here. Uh, the first uh, but it was, you had to take them both. We really wanted George, so we did buy them both. Uh, George was top's first non-UK or Irish person to be top goal scorer in the league, the second uh, league we had in it. In the English division. St James's Park. The first game played at St James's Park was in 1880. It was by a team called Newcastle Rangers. That was a practice match. East end of the city, where I pointed out before, where the red, green, white film was, they were formed in 1881. The West End, which is this part of the city, were formed in 1882. West End came and took the lease from uh, Newcastle Rangers in 1886. But they fell into financial trouble as well. East End absorbed West End and took all their lease as well. To cut a long story, a long story short, in 1892 we became the Castle United, and the two two teams became one because their fans didn't particularly like their fans and vice versa. So we came up with the Castle United in 1892, and yes, we did play in red and white. That is a fact. But the only reason it couldn't be worse, it could have been stripes. But anyway, the fact of the matter is, every team played. If you look down the leagues, yeah, a lot of teams played red and white. It was just such an easy die. Everyone had to get a hold of red die. In fact, the, divi the second division of the English league that were joined a year later had Rotherham, um, Middlesbrough, Liverpool, and Arsenal Woolwich in that league. And all of them wore red and white to still do it. But we weren't happy with that. We wanted to change the strip. We wanted to be different from the norm. And we went for the black and white stripes. I've heard a load of rumours for these. Uh, Magpies nesting in the stadium. William Cavendish's troops fought in black and white. Uh, Dominican friars walked around the city with black and white robes on. But the truth of the matter is, is we went to Northumbria at the end. says, we've got any change strips. Their change strips were the black and white stripes which is the Shepherd's plan, which is Northumbria Tartan, which is black and white. And that's where they came from. Has anyone got any questions on that? I quickly take you through the badges in 1969. 
Then we went a bit more modern. We went for the the tain. But anyone from Newcastle knows the tain is never that blue. It's usually a greeny brown colour with a trolley sticking out of it or something. <laughs> and we've got the magpie in Newcastle. Then we went a bit retro. I didn't particularly like the badge in '83, but I did like the silver strip with the blue star and the players that represented it, as in Beardsley and Keegan, etc. They were good days. But from 1988 to the present day, we've got a little bit of everything. We've got the blue for the time, we've got our black and white colours, we've got our maritime links there. Never forget the ship building, shipping coal and steel around the world. We've got the Demi Lion, and what, we, what was St. Jesus Cross is now blue. The blue is supposed to signify our Baltic and Scandinavian links, shipping coal and steel to the Scandinavian and the Baltic regions. That's what that's supposed to recognise. And that was from 1988 till the present day. Right, I'm looking about here and I can't see anyone who looks like they're about in the early 1900s. But I'll take you next door and tell you some lads that were. Good time to be in Newcastle United. Right, as I said before, 19, early 1900s, good time to be a Castle United supporter. We won the league in 05, 07 and 09. We were FA Cup winners in 1910. We were also finalists in 05, 06 and 08. Very good times. These are some of the boys that helped with do it, the Teddy boys. Of I'll start over here. Jimmy Lawrence, still record appearances till this day, formed in 98. No goals. What do you think he played? All good. Keep goal, keep on. Jimmy Lawrence, Northern Irish defender, famed for being so good at the offside trap that they changed the laws. Back in the days, I think they kept about six or seven clean sheets. Uh, Bill McCracken was one of them that organised everything, so. Northern Irish defenders, I see here, they changed the rules from having. Three defenders from the foremost attack of the goal line to two defenders, and the goal ratio went up one point two again. So hence, we've still got the same rule now: two defenders between the foremost attack and the goal line. Then we had John Jock Rutherford. John Jock Rutherford was a Newcastle's youngest ever goal scorer at the time. He was seventeen. He was. He still is Arsenal's oldest outfield player, I believe. And he's also famed for having. Do we remember Greg Rutherford? He's a great grandson, a ginger lad, long jumper, 2012. He won that, he won the gold medal. That was his affiliation when Newcastle comes from his great granddad, Jock. Last but not least, Colin Beach. Colin Beach, bit of a midfield dynamo, but he could play all over the park, bar and goal, because he was only a small lad. A bit of a boy, Colin. You'd find him in St James's Park on a Saturday afternoon. You'd find him over the people's theatre, our Heaton. On a Saturday night, he was a bit of a thespian, a player writer. He also, also helped introduce the players' trade union. He was a trade unionist. Unfortunately, after he finished playing football, he went into journalism. And he, uh, he wrote some negative articles about Newcastle. So he got barred from the ground. So it wasn't just happening back in the day. Uh, last week, last year, with Grey Go, it was happening back in the early 1900s. So no changes. Right, some of the suites we've got here. We've got the Bobby Robson suite there. That holds 80 people on a match day. Uh, you'll, you, you'll come in about one o'clock. You get your three course meal, your silver service, all that. Maybe but you also get unlimited drink from one or six. That's about seven, seven and a half grand a year. Here you've got a little bit more about the Joe Harvey suite. That holds about 35. But you get a champagne reception when you come in there. And also you can migrate through to the chairman's suite as well. So if they've got any uh, who are maybe like delegates from you here or in or any of the then they can mix with them. Sam Fenner or what you call Anthony Deck, they got in there as well, so you can mix with all them. But that goes up about nine and a half grand a season. Uh, you've also got the Moncur suite down there, the Milburn suite and heroes. But the thing about all these is that you have to go outside. You have to go outside to watch the game. 
What a hard job there. So let's get out get, let's get out and have a look. Everyone it's here, yeah, who knows and says you want to the people. Yeah, that was it then. The only thing with this, you when you get that horrible little northeast wind here with the rain, you do get wet when you're sitting here. Because you've got to be up the row S before you stay dry, because the rain just sweeps in with the roof. If it, that northeast wind catches it off the coast, it's bitter here and it's rainy. So that's the only downside. But the upside is, I don't think you're going to get a much better view. These three, three lines of seats, that one, this one, and this one, do not get sold on a regular basis here on your Castle United seats. Uh, so, usually, for instance, the man and Murdad sit up here, the Ruben brothers sit down here, Darren Eels. Uh, if you've got any celebrities here, you usually sit down this bit. England manager usually sits over there, or he was there the last time as well. So, but if Piff are here, they'll sit wherever they want and everyone just sits around them. So, that's the way it is. The other option seats, it's 12 and 13 kk. Yeah, if if there's two of the Robson family here, as in Lady Elsie, one of our sons, that's where they'll sit. If there's none of the Robson family here, the seats won't be sold, they'll be left empty because they're more to respect to Bobby. Uh, as just, the lady just said before, I don't think anyone's had a bad word to say about Bobby, class bloke. I'll tell you a bit more about him later on. These monitors go back to when Sam Allardyce was a manager. Sam Allardyce used to have a big entourage, as you all know. He used to have about a 40 entourage way before everyone else into pro zone, analysing this, analysing that. Anyway, he sat there and he had a normal monitor and a delayed monitor. If he saw somebody didn't like there, he would look at the delayed monitor, didn't like it, get down to the dugout, onto the analysts. They'll either report it and keep it till half time or they'll feed it back through the week when the whole squad watch the game together and analyse it together. That's the bed even sits down, never mind. Just in front of us, where the dirt track is, is where the press sits. There's room for about 144 press there, uh, and that's where they all sit. Just to the left of the green sign there, just in that bit there, is where you'll have uh, Rears Beck and uh, Anderson, who do the rear duo in Newcastle. If you have a look at one from you, that's where they sit. Uh, I think that's about it. There's a good forward opportunity here. You can get that crest in face in the back so I can get that in for you, I don't charge or something if the kids like to touch the badge up there. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to take the photos and we're going to go across the road. So as I say, it's only the weird players who come in here now. I'm sure many will remember when we saw Lanny Cole at Manchester United and Mr. Keegan came out and appeased the fans on these stairs. Yeah, I was calling Keegan stairs from that day. 
Uh, what we talk on his sleeve that day and uh, appease the fans. But we did get Mr. Ferdinand and Mr. Sheer out now, and so we can't complain so much. Anyway, so what will happen is the team bus will come about two and a half, uh, two hours, an hour and a half before the game. Park right outside there. There'll be loads of fans there welcoming them, saying, Nice to see you here, lads. Have a good game. Wish you all the best, as you can imagine, standing outside. Uh, anyway, they'll come up the stairs. We haven't got any trophies to intimidate them. So what we'll do is put our great players in a past up. And I'll quickly go through with them with you. We'll start, we'll start with my dad, with the oldest 21-year-old you'll ever see in your life. 1971, Super Mac, a.k.a. Man McDonald, uh, scoring a hat-trick against Liverpool on his debut with St James's Park. Remember that game well. <laughs> Up there we've got a lovely view of a nice St. Je uh, very full St James's Park against Sunderland. We beat them 3-2. I'm sure people over there will remember that Emery a free kick. Uh, great free kick, Turkish lad. Up here, here's a one for you. 1997, Oasis were playing at the arena on the same night. Uh, I had tickets for both of them. My heart ruled my head. I come to St James's Park. And I bet this place was rocking more than the arena was. It's the first time I felt, <coughs> excuse me, it felt like the stands were actually moving and everyone was jumping up and down. It was <coughs> Tino scoring a hat trick against Barcelona in uh, 1997. What a game. 1996, we beat Man U 5 0. That was Red Stern, that's going on the duels. <coughs> we missed that back on his back. And then uh, Mr. Ginola there, looking for the ladies, Ginola, looking the other way. 51, we had Joe Harvey lifting one of the three FA Cups we won that decade. 1993, Andy Cole scored, but David Kenny, a very underrated player in my eyes, I love him the bits. Back in 1993, that was the last game of the season. It was, uh, we we'll beat Leicester, we we'll beat Leicester 7 1. It was a beautiful summer's day, a great day. 69 and 40, that's the last time we won a cup, and it was the first cup, it was a European cup. And there's Moncur with Vice Captain Clark. And last but not least, Mr. Shearer, 2006, won his 206 goal at the Stadium of Light against Sunderland. Uh, unfortunately, that was his last goal that he scored for us. <coughs> Either side here, we've got two local lads, two local heroes. I'll start with this lad first. Bobby Robson, that was unveiled around his 75th birthday. We'll play in Manchester United. Uh, he was good friends with Alec Ferguson on and off the pitch. So Alex came down with Kevin Keegan. Bobby was standing over in the corner and he, he unveiled that bust. Uh, what do you say about Bobby? Respected all over the world, managed in Spain, Portugal, Holland, more importantly, England and Newcastle. His name still goes on for this day with his uh, Robson Foundation. Still raising millions for charity. I don't think anyone, as I say, well respected man, no one had a bad word to say about him. Then you've got Jackie Milburn, uh, cousins of the late Jack Charlton and Bobby Charlton, just up the road from uh, Ashton. In there with him, he's got three FA Cup medals 51, 52, and 55. In the 55 FA Cup, he scored what was then the quickest goal ever to be scored in the FA Cup final, has been beaten now. Uh, he's also got a silver medal around his neck to commemorate the for England in the 1950 World Cup. But we got knocked up, out of an amateur team called America. Oh, no. <laughs> but those are the days. Just on that one, going back there, like, Jackie Milburn was record school for on Newcastle United. Played by England, he was getting 12 pounds a week wages back in the day. In the close season, he got six pound a week. He had to do another job to subsidise his wages. It was even word that he used to get worried about getting. If he had had a bad game, he used to get the bus back on Ashton and he used to leave at the later because he didn't want to get on with our fans in case he got sick. Yeah, how times have changed. Right. right, as you can imagine, very, very. We'll have a flash interview there, but the main media room's down there, which I will take you two through. But these things all changed around here back in 2006. That used to be the weight changing room. It's now a match officials. And that used to be the home changing room. Now that's the weight changing room. 
and that's the home changing room which used to be the old ticket office and it all come up and changed when Dope Control came in. Dope and Control can take two players whenever they want they, after a match or they can go to the training ground and take two players whenever they want. They don't have to tell you they're coming, they'll just come on the day, take two players. The worst case scenario I've heard was when we were playing Everton a few years ago. Martinez was manager at the time. Uh, they took a player called Phil Jagielka, took him in there. It was a warm day, very dehydrating. It was one early in the season. He obviously didn't have much fluids left in his body. Half past six, Martinez come down and went, yeah, Phil, we've been here now. I want a heart now, we're going. So they took off on the bus and went. It was after nine o'clock before we eventually got Phil Jagielka in a taxi with a pizza and sent him on his way to Liverpool. And that's how look it took. You cannot come out of there until you give a sample. Simple as that. And it took them that long. Fortunately, that's the worst case scenario. The good thing is we have never had a positive result from home or away player here or at the training ground. So long may that continue. At least we know what sports clean. Well, I'm going to take in the way changing room. I've got a few stories that have gone out on all day about a way changing rooms. Has anybody here uh, been on in stadium tours before? Yeah, Barcelona. Um, well, not. I don't class Barcelona or Real Madrid because they are exceptions to the rule. Come on, that one. Yeah. Awesome. Did they let you in the way of changing them? The one changing them? Yeah. They didn't let you in both? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it's like a little step up for my home. Yeah. Loads of little things like that. I mean, take it from me, this is good as far as away dressing rooms go. It, 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 it is, put it this way, the old changing room, you see the white tiles there? When it was back there, they had 13 showers, which you had 13 pops up now again. It was not warm showers, it was hot or cold. You would have had these towels, uh, tiles, sorry, all over the walls and the floors. This latted would be latted seats would have just been no pegs, no shelving, would be basic as anything, the old changing rooms. Because the weather the, the weather the opinion they just try to make everything awkward for people. And uh, as I say, it was either hot or cold showers. What you'll find is like we this the reason this changing room is so good is because rugby league came in, obviously they come back every week week uh, once a week, once a year for a weekend now. And they said, if you don't sort the changing rooms out, we are coming back. That's how bad. In fact, England still complained at the start of the World Cup. They got the, they lost the toss and they were in here. And they complained how bad it still is now. And technically, on me, this is really good for an away changing room. I know as the new stadium is getting built, the, stadium, the changing rooms are getting better and better. Uh, they wouldn't let me in the changing rooms at Barcelona. Did they let you in the yeah. changing rooms? They did, both changing rooms. They had, um, was it, they had like jacuzzis yeah. and everything. Uh, well, they the, wouldn't let us, I don't know, it depends on how busy it is or whatever. I'm, I went, was it about seven years ago? So I'm talking. Oh, I, I would have been, would have been there around, maybe it's not seven, maybe it's about five years ago. But I, I'm not, I'm not, Barcelona and Real Madrid do treat their away fans the same. But we'll, we'll get back to this country in there, how, how we mistreat them anyway. So you might have like dark walls, dark black or grey. Uh, some of them open the windows and push the refuge to the windows so the smell comes in. Had Burton Albion fans in these hooks here. Yeah? What about head, head he says on our way of change rooms, these hooks are head height. Mm -hmm. Had some fans in from Lincoln, he, they, they get told quarter of an hour after the game, they have to turn the water off so there's no water at all. So you might be lathered up, it doesn't make no difference. The water goes off quarter an hour. 
Og så siger jeg, at jeg har stiget hårdt ud, Kjær. Vi så bliver kodkikker fra Nikasso bag det her. Men jeg har sat stiget, vi går i rigtig stor i spørgsmål. Jeg kan faktisk se, hvad jeg ser. Jeg kan 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 se, hvad jeg ser. Der er sådan bright yellow på de vores. Vi kan se, hvad jeg ser. Det er disorienteret, ja. Uh, Stork play classical music into the changing room to try and calm you down. Liverpool's changing room is under the stand. There's no soundproofing. So when you go in there, you can't shut yourself in. I think now teams are getting wise to it all. And they're, they're just having their team meetings before they even come to the ground. Like, if you look at this, this is what you get. There's no clock here, which is massive. If you're not in the tunnel for five minutes to go, there's big fines. Especially, if we, if, sorry, six minutes to go, there'll be a six, six or seven minute warning, and you have to be in there. And if we're on TV, it's even worse, because everything's down to the last second. So if that clock's not there, they've got to bring that. Liverpool, the Liverpool coach pulled up, he come a full 24 hours before the team. In fact, he come over 25 hours, five hours before the team, because they stopped the two hours coming in. He came in, he must have had about six trunks that big. I swear to God, they, they came in the coach themselves. And if you think they've got no massage beds, they've got to bring all, this, all the kits, all the boots. They have about four or five pairs of boots, all the kits, drinks, you name it, they have to bring it, beds, everything. We do give them a nice bath and shower, so. and we'll give them some pizzas, air pizzas, but they've got to pay for them themselves. <laughs> Can you feel it warming up now? We've twinkled the heat. The air condition doesn't work, never worked by years. We've put the heat up, it'll be boiling and yellow when they come in. And we'll put the showers on so it's all misty. Did anyone see the Arsenal documentary? When it all co- was it when it all costs? Anyway, if you had a look in here, they were forever the cameraman, forever <laughs> wiping their lenses down because it was just steaming up. But the weirdest one I've heard by a million miles is the Southampton one. In the Southampton one, there's three cubicles to go to the toilets in the changing rooms. <laughs> so you go in, you shut the door. Well, there's a mirror on the back of the door, I start as which I find weird. But on that mirror is an embossed Southampton strip. So when you're sitting on that toilet, <laughs> you look like you've got a Southampton strip on. <laughs> so where's the psychology there? <laughs> it's just weird, man. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> 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 Well, if you give us two minutes and you sit down, I'll quickly tell you about what happens and then I'll let you take the before we go to the media room. So, what will happen is, uh, as I say, it's lighter, brighter, bigger, nicer, basically. Than it's, it's, you can feel it's cooler. Uh, if they want, they'll, they'll usually bring a television for in the corner if they want to analyse anything. Also, the tactical boards and rooms next door. So they'll come in, you add a lot of it, crack. They reckon it's a picture on a, day, uh, on a match day when he's got all the things set up when the kit man's been in, done his stuff. You have like their strips, uh, their training gear, their sliders, their boots, whatever requirements you might have. If you've got any strength, you'll have the light right here, there for you. Uh, it looks really good. Just while I'm on about the strips and that, if you want to know the difference between the two strips, Isaac's strip, these strips all get put out for the, the two purposes. But this is where they'll sit if they're in the squad. They'll sit around here. But Isaac's strip, uh, Anderson's strip, and Pope's strip 
or we've had to got them with their Carol got them off the kit man because we couldn't get them from the shop. So if you want to check the, the difference between the proper strip and the strip to go to the shop, have a look at Isaacs and Andersons and they'll tell you much more stretchy and have more bent tools than them as well. So anyway, getting back to that, they'll come in about half past 11, 12 o'clock, they'll have a sit, they'll have a crap, then they'll go through there, you'll take them through there, uh, they'll talk tactics, Eddie's meticulous, you'll go right through the team, you'll go through pop, go through with the team tactics, then you'll go through each individual section of the team, and you'll even go through individually. And sometimes they'll come in here, yeah, they've got these whiteboards, and then each coach will take a fear away if he wants to tell them something specific on the whiteboards here yeah, as well. Uh, in here you've got your medical room. We have uh, ice baths there set at seven degrees Celsius. Um, they'll be something like lying in the North Sea. They'll be freezing like Eddie doesn't make everyone go in there. He leaves up the individual fear. That's a mate that mine. Previous managers have made everyone go in there, but Eddie doesn't. Then you've got the massage tables. There's a few massage tables there. A few of the fears like that have a massage. There as well, please don't go through there because the showers come on automatically. As soon as you walk, they'll come on. And if you want them a little bit warmer, you wave one hand, a little bit cooler, you wave the other hand. Uh, as I say, that used to be the players lounge. Then it was the changing rooms because this was deemed too small through COVID. But now it's like the warm up, warm down room and a tactical room. There's some bikes in there and some weights. So they do a little bit of uh, exercise in there as well. Uh, up above here, you have a safe box and you have a bit of storage space. So you can put your, they've all got Rolexes or tags or Gucci watches or something now. Countdown clock, massively important. Eddie will know exactly where he is. And there's a speaker there where the referee will pause in with about six or seven minutes to go to tell them to be in the tunnel for five minutes. We've got my drink station here. We've got my energy drinks, isotonic drinks. And there's usually plenty of water on there. We have protein drinks, hydro drinks, just to rehydrate yourself. And there's usually a box with a package in it's got like an omega 3 drink in, concentrated juice, uh, fruit sachets, and some little tablets in. They must be for specific fears. And on the top there, we've usually got flapjacks, energy bars, and fruit, just to give them an um when they come in at all time or before they go out. Yeah, I think that's about it. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Oh, boom box, the boom box. We used to have a little ghetto blaster there. The boom box, and he brought that in. Uh, now there's no arguments. Every player puts four songs in, gets put on random, so they won't argue. And the, the coffee machines that he is, well, there's usually a little bit of almond milk in there as well, but it isn't in there today. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to take some photos, and then we'll head down to the media room. Exciting. You some of the names on the shirts. Take a picture of him in a second. Can I see him there? You can't see him that one. your press officer here, always let the way team come and do their press conference first. Um, so the way team will come do their press conference first. 
Pastor asked some of the questions. You got me coming out something with the back. Next door there, you see all the portals where they'll come with their laptops there, where the beauty port and outside where I showed you where the first pet is. They'll come in the other and they'll write the reports up and send them all around the world. Next door to here, we'll have Cass Kitchen, named after Cass Cassidy, who was a tea lady here of over 50 years, saw off about 26 managers. Made 122,000 grooms, I don't know how they know that, but someone must have counted them. So that's what it says, so that's where it is. Uh, basically, this is just a phone opportunity. If you want to get up there, get your phone to Tim. All I ask is that you please don't touch the mics. Awesome. Then we're going to finish up on big sides. We've got our two team captains. Might be a team captain, son. Team the boy, eh? Do I need the teams out? <laughs> I'm going to put the local hero music on and the lads are going to walk the two teams down down the tunnel and to the dugouts. Uh, I think these are the last four doors now so we'll get these to and then we'll, we'll make our way down to the pit side. Sorry? Sorry? When I say pitch side, I mean pitch side. You please do not go on the pitch because Lee and Carol will get the sack. <laughs> right. You slowly walk down. You slowly walk down. When you get to the end, you turn right. When you get to the end, you turn left. All right? You keep them right because you will always hold them. Wait for the music. Formula One designed these seats. Uh, I think we can design them. I'm not sure now. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, they're great, they're not. So I'll give you a little recap. We started off right up there on level seven, and we came down to the box here, yeah, just with the with the known names on the sides there. Then we came down to level three where the direct has to be drawn. Now we're finished. Then. But the the points from here up to the roof. There is also another try you can do between the months of April and October and that's a rooftop trap where you walk around the back of the roof there and you look down one way to the corners and the other way down the side and that you can see the air, the angels of the north, the angels of the north. So 
The air, the ball camera comes up over the other side of the halfway line. That'll just pop up there. And I think that's about it. Is anyone any questions? I'll give you a couple of minutes to take because we'll lose capacity. You know what I mean? So we're trying to get more, not lose. And I don't think it's such a big deal, to be honest with you. Well, it was a great player. Not a great manager. Probably it's got to be... Uh, Oh, well, you get your light, man. Do we start on the light? Right, so that was a stadium tour of St James's Park. There's the uh, there's the badge that you get given on your uh, on your the day of your tour. Can I keep it? You get to keep it as well. And if you go to is it Shaver's Bar? The shop. Or the shop, you get discounts on uh, whether you're buying merchandise or whether you're buying uh, drinks or whatever. So there you go, I enjoyed that. I've been in the stadium before anyway, uh, watching Premier League games and things. Uh, but an actual tour of the stadium, that's the first one that I've done. It's definitely the first one Shell's done. No, no, we've done, it. we've done the New Camp Stadium in uh, Barcelona, we've done that too before. There you go if you enjoyed that video hit the like button everything's so everything's free on our channel you know the you know the score there's the bobby the great man himself Right, that's it. We certainly enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy watching it. So from Pete and Shell, thanks so much for joining, for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Whatever that may be. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.